Hey, a pleasant good evening, everybody, as it is a nice evening in Phillies land, as we're obviously hoping for more moves, probably post-lockout at this point, but you still got six hours to get them in, Dave Dombrowski, so maybe we make some moves in the lineup or in the outfield via trade, via signing, before the, honestly, uh, looks like it's definitely going to happen at this point, impending lockout, unfortunately. But in this one, we're going to talk about great news, Corey Knebel getting signed by our Phillies for one year. That is absolutely great to see. This dude's curveball uh, spin rate is ridiculous. His fastball spin is ridiculous, and his fastball velocity is ridiculous. Um, he relies on two of his pitches, his four-seamer at 58.1%, but his curveball comes in at 41.9%. So obviously he mixes those tremendously and really well. Um, when it comes to his overall seasons, the only reason his ERAs are really higher is because he struggled in 15 games in the short of 2020 season where a lot of guys, if you go back and look at the numbers, like I said in past videos, that normally are consistent, did not have as good of a season, having that weird waiting in limbo when Tony Clark and Manfred didn't get along at that time either, or the owners, to be able to figure it out with the League 2 come back, and we thought at times that maybe that wasn't going to happen, but fortunately it did. Um, he had a 608, and then the first year he had a 623 in eight games, and then he had a 468 in 35 games in 2016. Otherwise, though, he's always been in the threes, had a 178, which was his best in 2017, and then a 245 last year, which was his second best. So he's coming off of his second best season. His best was with the Brewers. Second best was, of course, with the LA Dodgers last year. And now we bring in a very good flamethrower, Corey Knebel, who when you look at his fastball velocity, is 96%, and his curveball is at 80, which obviously gives it that nice zip, and sometimes also that slider-esque if he throws it a little bit differently, mixes up, if you look at him, some of the way he throws his curveballs at times, maybe not to the full degree of a slider, that might be a bad way to compare it, but throws it a little bit more downward and then a little bit more side, that's why I kind of compared it to a slider, because he has that 80-degree velocity, which really gives it that zip and kick at the end of it, unlike other fastballs that you see around the league that are more in the 70 velocity there as well, that are good curveballs, but not to the same zip or spin necessarily. But I really like this move. Uh, I think picking up Corey Knebel was the most wise thing the Phillies did of the offseason this far, because obviously the Philadelphia Phillies need as much help as they can get um, for the bullpen as well as just the overall roster. And it'll be interesting to see what Knebels do, does signing one year, 10 million bucks here. Is he going to be the closer or do we bring in, like I talked about in other videos, he's not the sexiest name, but look at his career numbers two in the two ZRA for his career has done well the opposite of most pitchers. Mark Melanson is a good guy to bring in because he's the opposite of most guys and closes well when asked upon to do it and hasn't done his whole career. So if you get another guy to close, then you have Corey Knebel and Melanson as great guys in the bullpen. I feel like Melanson is going to come in under the $10 million tag. So you got Corey Knebel for $10 million. Even if you pay Melanson $8 million, that's perfectly fine with how consistent he's been in his career. But I think he's more like you might be able to even get him for $5 million bucks for one year, which would be an absolute steal because he's already made his money. He's in his mid-30s. So he's a guy I wouldn't be surprised if you get him for $5, 6000000000 billion. And that would be a steal if he continues to pitch at the pace he's pitching. And even $10 million for Knebel if he continues to pitch at two-something. $10 million for one year I am perfectly fine with. That value with where the baseball value is, obviously, an overall real-life value. Yeah, baseball players do get paid a lot in the grand scheme of things, but that's a conversation for a different time. In terms of where the league value is, that's a good value for the statistics Corey Knebel puts out. He'll be a hell of an eighth-inning pitcher and a very solid closer if you have to put him in that role, but I still believe the Phillies should go out and grab somebody, whether it's pre-lockout this evening or post-lockout whenever the hell we do come back, hopefully before people are set to report in the end of January, beginning of February. But we'll have to see. Hopefully the Phillies do make more moves there. Oh, and actually, when it comes to Mark Melanson, I didn't realize this. Um, I just saw he signed two years, $14 million, So I was kind of right on the AAV, um, 6 to $8 million. He got paid, obviously, $7 million there for two years, and I would have been perfectly happy if the Phillies did that, 
But obviously, they might have a chance to trade for him as the Diamondbacks give him a two-year deal, probably so they have even more value to trade him at the deadline, because if he keeps kicking butt like he has his whole career, you have the second year, which gives his trade value heightened, because teams don't have to just have him for a rental. They have him for that season and the following season. So I could easily see Melanson. Sorry about that. I didn't see that. But two years, $14 million with the D-backs being the guy the Phillies look to at the deadline. Only $7 million bucks obviously, for the following season. And then you would only be paying him half of that salary, obviously. If you trade for him at that point at the deadline, you're not paying him the full salary. It might even be a little bit less than half. So that's a great guy to look for for the deadline. But, of course, the D-backs got him now. So that's not a guy available, and that sucks. Again, as the Phillies don't take advantage of another guy in the market, but they do take advantage of Corey Knebel, which is absolutely fantastic because this guy, a absolute fireballer out there with the fastball and has the great, just ridiculous, like, funk to the end of the curveball since he's at 80 miles per hour with a lot of jazz at the end of it there that is really hard to pick up. So this has been a video on the Phillies making their first big pickup of the offseason as hopefully more come in to talk about so there's more positive news to talk about prior to the lockout. But we will have to see going forward in the next six hours as this video is being done around 6 o'clock p.m. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. And as always, if you enjoy the content, please subscribe. Here and at Steel Flyers All Sports Network as well, which is Steel Flyers on YouTube for all sports, NHL, NFL, NBA, and of course MLB content. And also type in Steel Flyers or Pirlo Dance or OTWH into Manscaped to get 20% off and free shipping. Peace out, everybody.